All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how enabling jumbo frames can get you a lot better performance out of your existing gear. All right, so first I'll start off by explaining what jumbo frames are. And I'll kind of use the analogy of shipping boxes. So jumbo frames are basically storing more data in every single network packet. This means that the overhead is lower. Not only is more of the packet by percentage actual data, rather than signature stuff, it also means that there are less packets in general. All right, and so the way I'd equate this is to kind of thinking about shipping something. Say you order 50 things on Amazon. Amazon could either send with 50 boxes or send it in all one big box. Now, right off the bat, you're probably thinking, well, why wouldn't everybody just send in this bigger box? Well, it's because that it's not actually part of the networking standard. The networking standard has an MTU of 1500. And having jumbo frames, which are generally a MTU, maximum transfer unit, is 9000. Basically, you're going against networking standards that are laid out. However, jumbo frames are something that almost all networking companies have all kind of agreed to use. However, some of them do have an issue where it's slightly different. And so you really gotta do some testing to make sure everything's gonna work correctly. The thing you need to make sure is true when enabling jumbo frames is you need to make sure that every single piece of gear that is between the client and the server all have jumbo frames enabled. Because if you have something like a switch that does not have jumbo frames enabled or cannot even handle jumbo frames, it is going to have to strip down and rebuild all those big packages into little ones, meaning you're going to have a much larger bottleneck there. It'd be like if you sent a really big package to the post office and they had to go through and take it out and put it into a bunch of smaller boxes. And that's going to take a long time. Now this only has to be true for any client and server that is connecting. So you could have a setup where your Synology has jumbo frames enabled and all the hardlined connections to it have jumbo frames enabled, but all the Wi-Fi connections do not have jumbo frames enabled. Then whenever you were connecting over Wi-Fi, the Synology would not be building jumbo frames. It would only be sending out the regular frames. So you can control it by controlling the clients. So for the networking gear, you're going to have to check on it yourself, but I've actually found that a few manufacturers, my Netgear switch, for example, out of the box just has jumbo frames enabled and there's actually no way to disable it. This is because there's very few reasons why you would ever want to disable jumbo frames on a switch because it's only going to forward on jumbo frames if it gets them. If it gets regular frames, doesn't matter to it. It'll just send on regular frames. Another thing to note, for gigabit connections, it's helpful, but where this really shines is with 10 gigabit connections because there's so much less overhead. So I'll actually be demoing this on my Synology DS1819 Plus with the 10 gigabit expansion card. So I'm hooked in at 10 gigabit right now. All right, so before we enable jumbo frames, we're going to do a baseline test of what our read write speeds are with the jumbo frames disabled. So right now I've got my NAS hooked up and right now I've got all my virtual machines powered off and everything disconnected to it. And so theoretically this should be a good control test. And so we'll be able to judge the differences between the two. So I'm using Blackmagic speed test over SMB to do a five gig read write test. All right, so I've got five drives in a RAID 5 configuration. So I've got some pretty good read write here. Get about 560 write speeds and about 460 read speeds. Now those read speeds are weird. We should be getting higher read speeds than this because when you're having a RAID 5 configuration, generally you're gonna have much higher read speeds than write speeds because you don't require the additional parity math of writing it. And so now to enable jumbo frames, the first thing you're going to need to do is enable jumbo frames on all the switches you plan to use. If one switch is not compatible with jumbo frames, 
don't bother using jumbo frames. It's only going to slow you down. And so once you've done that, go ahead and log into DSM. We're going to go into control panel, network, network interface, and see, I've got this LAN five. That's my 10 gig connection. And we're just going to select it and click edit. And it's really easy right here. Just click this set MTU value and put it to 9,000. 9,000 is the standard maximum transmission unit for jumbo frames. So I would recommend just having everything be 9,000. Then some switches might have some different settings. So you're going to have to figure that out if they don't have jumbo frames. Though by most manufacturers definition, a jumbo frame is that with 9,000. And so you'll see jumbo frames or you'll see maximum transmission unit. So we've set it to 9,000, and so we're going to click OK. It's going to refresh our network. And so now we're going to do the same test, but I've not enabled Jumbo Frames on my Mac yet. So let's just see what it has. And so it's got pretty comparable read write speeds. That's because right now Jumbo Frames are not being used because the client that is connecting to the server does not have them enabled and therefore the server is not going to try to send them. All right, so now let's go about and enable Jumbo Frames on my network connection on my Mac. Whatever client you're using, make sure to enable it there, but on a Mac, just select the Wi-Fi symbol, open network preferences, and on the connection, go into advanced, and under hardware, select MTU and change it to Jumbo. And that's all you gotta do. And so now we just clicked apply. And so now it should be sending jumbo frames. So let's go ahead and start that speed test up again. All right. And so there you go with the numbers, the write speed, pretty good increase, right? That read speed had a huge increase. It doubled. So this is going over what most manufacturers say you'll get. And I think this is actually coming down to SMB. So SMB is a really chatty standard. It likes to send a lot of extra information over the TCP connection. And TCP is where jumbo frames have been shown to give huge advantages. Another thing is we're sending one fourth as many packets to get the exact same amount of data across because now each packet has 9,000 versus 1500 bytes. That means all the bottlenecks that are caused by the CPU waiting to send all those connections are being ironed out. So I'm really attributing this huge speed gain to the slower clock speed on the DS1819 plus. It's about 2.1 gigahertz, which is causing a bit of a bottleneck with the SMB connection. I'd love to hear other people's experiences and how much it's improved their connection for people who are using jumbo frames. So go ahead and leave those in the comments below. And I think that's it for this tutorial. Have a good one. Bye.